Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unarmored Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Mario P. Fields, and today's guest is Christina and Michael Zuniga. Welcome to Unarmored Talk Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is amazing to be here with you. No, I'm happy. Hey, I couldn't have a podcast without guests. <laughs> I mean, I could, but it would be boring. I think it would be. But hey, can, can, y'all, can y'all tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So I am a Marine veteran. I'm an author of three books and also a speaker and an entrepreneur. And here are my three books right here. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it, real quick, can I get them on Amazon? Absolutely. They're all available on Amazon. Put, put those books up to, for the screen again and put them up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, go on Amazon. I know go on Amazon, get you a copy. If Christina has authored them, I know they're inspired. I'm getting I'm, I'm gonna order mine today. Nice. Thank you so much. Go ahead. <laughs> and then oh, hey, to- hey, real fast yes. for the for the listeners, what's the titles? What's what's the titles for the listeners? Yes. Okay. The first book is called The Crucible, How the Hardships of Life Forge Us into Extraordinary Warriors. Mm. The second book in the series is called Extraordinary Warriors. And then the third one is In the Face of Giants. Nice, nice. Well, listeners, you got it. And if you want to see it, go on a YouTube channel. Check it out on that on our Talk podcast playlist. Yeah, go ahead. Finish up. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I've been an active duty soldier for the last five years. Nice. We got married to Christina this year, and we've just been going, you know, rolling with the punches ever since. <laughs> what a combination, Army and Marine. Sometimes, hey, I mean, my wife is Navy veteran. So that, you know, we're Department of the Navy, got it. We do a lot of things with our Navy brothers and sisters. But Army and Marines, hmm. <laughs> There's a little bit of conflict, but we get through it. <laughs> The thing is, Army ain't ready to be Marines yet, so you have to marry one since you're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and you know, Mike, Michael's smart, too. He's like, yeah, you're right, baby. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, yep, I agree with you all the way, Mario. That's okay. right. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, 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 wow. Th- hey, thanks for serving, uh, my guy. I believe our nation has a precious jewel called freedom. And uh, it takes folks to volunteer to protect it. So thanks, my friend. Well, hey, guys, let's jump right into the topic. Army, right? Active duty soldier, Marine veteran. You're going through your own transition struggles, author, entrepreneur. And now you're a military spouse. How, how, how are y'all doing it? I think the number one answer is God. Yes. Without God, it wouldn't work very well. Um, definitely was really tough in the beginning, mm-hmm. especially when we first got married, we expected Michael to be deployed. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't even know exactly when that time frame was going to be. So there was all kinds of emotions and a roller coaster ride. And we just got married. Of course, I want to be with you. I don't even leave. And <laughs> they're saying that you could leave in a couple months. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that. And of course, he has no choice in the matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, I actually took my health into consideration and was able to get that done thanks to her and focus more on that than just keep on going and going because I've done that for the past, you know, four years, two, two overseas, you know, tours and services. And it just was nice to slow down and be like, wait, I need to take care of my body for my family. So right. that's what made me not deployable, my knee, uh, I had some knee issues. And, you know, God blessed us and we've been working and building things ever since. Wow. Now, now, did you ever expect to marry a Marine? Did you ever imagine not only are you going to marry a Marine, but but she's going to become an author, an entrepreneur? Nothing against you. Nothing against you, Mike. But, you know, it it looks like the woman is is really making things happen in the household. Some people struggle with that. Talk talk to me, Mike. Have you what's your thoughts on it? What what emotions and, and things you have going on? Well, definitely, it is nice seeing her being able to pursue her, her dreams and everything like that. And for me, I don't have an ego about it. It was just more of a, hey, I know what you're doing, especially before we got married. You know, I was like, you know, when we were talking, you know, I, I saw that she had books out and everything. And I just want to be a part of that, not really to hinder it or anything or take her away from that, but also just to support her and, you know, collaborate with her on everything. 
Man, nice. The power of a husband supporting his wife. You hear you hear so many times of of the you know the the lady in the house, you know, just just you know by whomever's metrics, I don't know, but she if she's the most powerful one, and the husband has an issue. He has ego and emotion issues. It's refreshing to hear you say that that you don't have an ego, right? You you're aware of your ego. You just don't let it get in the way. And Christine, yeah. how about you? You're a marine, right? Simplify. We, we got we got this inner service banner. I mean, I'm looking at you go on my YouTube channel, look at all the comments from soldiers on my videos. <laughs> Did you ever think you would marry a soldier? Oh, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> I'm glad oh. I didn't marry a Marine, though, either, but I never thought it would be a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So any challenges, any things, you know, you, you transition from active duty Marine to now Marine veteran. You pick up that veteran brand. Now you're a military spouse and he's in the Army. What, what's going on? Any challenges with that? Oh, there were definitely challenges, especially in the very beginning, because I know as soon as I got out, I went far away from any military base mm -hmm. as far as I could. <laughs> and then him bringing me back to a military base. A lot of emotions came up. A lot of emotions, like me being frustrated. Wow, I'm not active duty anymore. You're a part of this like group of people that I wish I was still a part of. Um, and then the differences in the middle in the branches, like the Marine Corps, we hold ourselves like we take pride in our uniform. And then I was like, why are these people their haircuts, their hair they're out of rags? I was getting so mad yeah. all the time. Anytime I'd go on base, I'd get so mad at all the soldiers. I was like, yeah. I just want to scream at you and I can't. <laughs> Well, first I didn't understand because I was like, what? This is how we always are. It's like, what do we, you know, uh, we're air defense. We just kind of get everything done and be like, we're more about the mission than looking good, I guess. You know, like we always, you know, we can get deployed on a moment's notice. So I think that's what happens. You get kind of lax. But then I did, we did visit um, Camp Lejeune. And then I noticed, oh, okay, these are what Marines are. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, oh, I think I need to change. <laughs> <laughs> did you hey no mike did did you ever look at christina and go you know you're a veteran right i mean uh you you, you know you you are in the bleachers <laughs> yeah 100 a lot of the times it's just like it's okay you know you don't have to worry about this we'll you know i'll, we'll, I'll go to work you know we'll be out of here in like five minutes but yeah especially in the beginning like she was saying just the emotions that came up it was just a lot of anger that i, I noticed and it was just uh, interesting to see how hard it was for her. You, you know, it's interesting, Christina, how you mentioned when you got out of the Marine Corps, you you wanted to get as far away from any military at all. Like, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to be near anything that has anything to do with military. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you get close to a military installation and you're like, man, I really miss Oh yes, mm -hmm. the camaraderie and the culture and the closeness. Except it's you know it's a different branch of service. Any mm -hmm. it, the, when you mentioned that that you know when you got back near a military base, it triggers some things. Um, any depression set in during this phase? Oh, definitely. Uh, seeing him being a part of what I missed and what I wanted to be a part of that. There was a lot of depression that hit during that time. Just like, oh, I miss, I miss being active duty. Mm -hmm. And as you said, not being on the bleachers, being on the field. I miss playing on the field instead of just sitting back like, oh, I remember that game. I remember doing <laughs> that stuff. Right. That, it, was, it was very depressing for a while. And I had to like pull myself out. And thankfully, Michael was extremely understanding and was it mad when I yell at random soldiers in the car, start barking at them? <laughs> he was very, very understanding and helped me, definitely helped me through that. And, and the soldiers probably might, the soldiers probably looking at looking at her going, yeah, that must be a Marine. We're <laughs> <laughs> just giving them the side eye and just like keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you mentioned, you know, and, and, and Mike, Michael, did, you know, Mike, did you notice when she when Christina started to battle the the, the depression, um, how did you support her? You know, a lot of a lot of service members when they transition, they battle with that. Might you might even do deal with it. 
But how did you support her when you started to notice that? What were some of your tech, uh, you know? It was, it was around June when I started noticing the depression. Um, that was after I had come back from the field and we we'd started going to work together a little bit more. She needed the car. And so, yeah. you know, she'd drop me off for everything and stuff like that. Well, as that happened, I just noticed her getting angry when we were in the car. And then, yeah, at home, she would uh, just kind of like just be sulky a little bit, you know, like not want to get up, not want to do things. And that was hard to see because I was like, are you OK? Uh, you know, like I, I didn't get it because, you know, me having been able to serve my full service term, you know, it's very different from somebody who was involuntarily uh, separated. And I didn't get that until probably about July. You know, I was like, come on, like, you know, I was understanding, but a little bit like, come on, um, well, let's get up, let's go do something, you know, let's get motivated again. But there was just nothing you could do because she had to just feel those emotions. And then by yeah. July, she started getting a handle on them. Um, I think that was hard, too, because that was her first trimester of pregnancy. And then all those hormones were just amplifying it. Wow. So you, you throw a blessing, right? Uh, just my belief. You get blessed and you're pregnant. Now you're battling with depression. You're a Marine in the Army's <laughs> area, you know, soldier's area. What did you do, Christina, to, you know, what choices did you make to, to get through that depression? I think, especially since the books that I write are about your mentality and having a strong mentality, like the person on the crucible, how the hardships of life forge us into extraordinary warriors. It was like, I wrote this to give to people and to teach them how to have that marine mentality. So why am I not living it out? Like, I can't, I can't change the fact that I'm no longer active duty. I'm not going to go back. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't change those things. I can't change the fact that I do live next to an army base. So I really needed to decide, am I going to like live out what I'm talking and trying to give to other people? Or am I just going to say one thing and do the other and not being authentic to what I'm trying to present to the world? I think that was even more like stressful on me. Like, how can I be depressed when I'm trying to teach people how to get through this? So really looking at what is the message I'm trying to give to the world? And I need to first be able to walk that out before I can expect anyone else to pick up my book and be like, wow, yeah, this is some truth that I can apply to my life if the author herself can't even apply it to her life. Uh, so I think that was a really big one, just being like, I don't want to be double standard here when it comes to my work and what I'm trying to give to the world. Wow, what an amazing testimony, you know what I mean? Like, how can... How can I give you advice and I'm not even behaving to confirm that I've endorsed my own advice? And, and it's just powerful to see a Marine veteran and soldier work together to, to beat this thing called depression, which is a very, 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 we see it, serious, serious emotion that, that hundreds of thousands, if you will, just my belief service members and people in general deal with you know look looking looking back looking back on that journey from the time you got out got married to a soldier got pregnant depression floats in airborne right i'll give you army 82nd airborne right i got respect for him right, so, <laughs> so depression comes out of the sky <laughs> lands in your house mm -hmm. How, looking back what would you have done different and what could what advice could you give the listeners and viewers? A really good question. Um, I think it is important to give yourself time to work through those emotions instead of just like totally have the Marine mentality of, no, I'm a Marine. I'm perfectly fine. Everything's under control. That you know, that stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to everyone around you. Um, I think that was important was Michael giving me the space to feel those emotions. I think it would have been nice acknowledging them a little sooner mm -hmm. instead of like just being angry and not like, this is why I'm angry. So Michael's just like, why are you mad all the mm -hmm. time? Like every time we go on base, why do you get mad? I'm just like, doesn't matter. I'm fine. <laughs> I think acknowledging it earlier <laughs> instead of like, nope, I'm fine. Having that whole 
whatever that is, that trying to maintain your composure. It's like, no, just be honest. Be, be with honest you. with yourself. And with, like, Michael genuinely cared. He genuinely wanted to know, like, what's happening with you? Because I know your anger is, there's a reason you're angry. So I think just being honest with yourself and the lo your loved ones, because they do care about you. Right. They aren't just like, stop being mad, stop having yeah. an attitude. They're like, no, let me help you through let's your attitude. Through let's work through it together. I think just being honest, I think that's a big point. Instead of like trying to have have your marine reputation like no i can't let my marine reputation get destroyed like i have everything under control no i don't it's okay to admit that you're struggling that you have depression and that you need help working through that because there's people in your life that are most likely more than willing to help you through it but you have to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. and with them first right yeah no well put and then mike from from the caretaker support role What's your thoughts? Honestly, I think God was a really big part of this whole transformation. We started going back to church um, after we got here. And it, it took us a little bit. It took us a couple months to find a good church to actually like start getting into the feel of everything. But once that started clicking in, all the pieces fell together and we were able to get out of it. We had this hope. We had this, you know, drive and desire to get better together and not let each other, you know, stay in the depression. Yeah, look at look at YouTube. You know, depression it has a very high rate of victory against humans and people. Um, but it, it's a blessing uh, to talk to to host YouTube, knowing that it actually, you know, again got into your front door and got. And I'm using a cliche, but you guys had to deal with that emotion in the way you did it together. I think um, is commendable. If if anyone wanted to find you all on social media. Um, wherever, where where can they find you? You can find us either under Christina Hadwin Zuniga, or you can also look up Extraordinary Warrior Pursuits. On Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. YouTube. Nice, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, again, amazing, amazing remarks. They did it together. Like Mike said, you got to be understanding, recognize those changes. And, and Christina, you said some great things, but the one thing I would like to highlight is you got to look in the mirror and accept that it's okay and and let's stop saying let's you know, stop trying to go or say nah this is not happening even though you're on base like ripping everybody apart <laughs> and you're retired you know you're you know you're not even on active duty thank you thank you guys so much congrats again on your pregnancy good luck and i'm looking forward to seeing that beautiful beautiful child here soon in the future all right Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. No, thank you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, God bless you, and we'll see you later.